Excellent. Welcome to part two of today's review double header, this time focusing on the graphics cards. Navi has finally arrived with AMD launching two mid-range cards with GPUs based on seven nanometer process technology, the Radeon RX 5700 and the 5700 XT. Oh, and if you're looking for Ryzen 3000 series CPU coverage, I posted that video already earlier today, so link is in the description. This past week has been dramatic because Nvidia tried to undercut AMD's Navi launch by dropping their RTX 20 series super cards, only five days ago. Wow, was that really just five days ago? It seems like a lifetime. But AMD had one last trick up their sleeve, and it was a last minute price drop. If this tweet from Radeon Technologies Group boss Scott Herkelman is to be believed, this has been their plan all along. But what we now have are reduced launch prices, with the RX 5700 now going for $350 instead of the originally planned $380, and the 5700 XT going for $400 instead of $450. To sum up these new 7 nanometer graphics cards, though, they are based on AMD's new RDNA architecture, which introduces major changes to the underlying GPU design compared to the previous GCN architecture, and they've switched from HBM memory to GDDR6, while also improving memory bandwidth to 448 gigabytes per second. The result is faster, more power efficient cards that run at much higher frequencies than former Radeon offerings. They are also the first PCI Express 4.0 GPUs, although honestly the increased bus bandwidth won't necessarily help performance in a significant way. The two models launching today are reference designs from AMD, and they do look pretty cool, although the XT kind of seems to be sucking in its gut a little bit there all the time. Both require 6-pin and 8-pin power connectors, and the Radeon RX 5700 is rated at 185 watts of total board power, while the Radeon RX 5700 XT is rated at 225 watts. These are blower style coolers, which have their use as they eject most of the hot air from the card out the back of your case. But we expect to see third-party designs very soon that should provide better cooling and potentially higher sustained clock speeds. Speaking of clock speeds, let's start our test results with some speed, power draw, and thermal numbers. The 5700 has a base clock of 1465 and a game clock of 1625. This is AMD's new terminology for what they think the card will run at under load at minimum, and they say it could probably go up from there. AMD also lists a peak clock, but rather than show that, I've just replaced it with what I saw as my sustained clock speed numbers. And the RX 5700 ran at about 1650 megahertz once thermals leveled out. 5700 XT has a base of 1605 and a boost of 1755, and it pushed up past 1900 megahertz initially before settling down to just over 1800 sustained. The power draw numbers are good news for Navi as well, with both peak and average power draw results for the 5700 and 5700 XT matching or beating the Nvidia competition. This is a great improvement on previous offerings from the Radeon team. Only the RTX 2060 draws less power overall, but it also underperformed in the benchmarks, as you will see in just a moment. Finally, for temperatures, the RTX cards ran cooler across the board in the low 70s versus the 76 and 84 degrees C temperatures that the 5700 and 5700 XT got up to. But bear in mind here that uh, for these cards, we're looking at dual fan open cooler designs that Nvidia has made in their Founders Edition, whereas AMD is still using blower coolers and will probably see improved versions of them when third party partners make custom variants. And now let's get into some real benchmarks, but first a quick look at my test bed, which is based on the ASRock Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard and an Intel Core i9 9900K CPU running at 4.8 gigahertz across all cores. It is cooled by the new Noctua NHU-12A tower cooler. The memory is a kit of G-Skill Royal RGB at 3600MHz CAS latency 16, and we're running Windows 10 version 1903, which is installed on a 512 gig Samsung 970 Pro M.2 NVMe SSD. The system is powered by an EVGA Supernova G3 750 watt power supply, and we are using an open test bed, not a case. Also, did I mention that I benchmarked 10 GPUs for this video, five from Nvidia and five from AMD, including the Vega 56 and 64 and the Radeon 7. These previous gen Radeon GPUs are on the more expensive side and they are being phased out, but they do provide a good point of comparison to show how far AMD has come with these new cards. That said, let's get into the benchmarks. We're starting off here with 3D Mark, their Firestrike Ultra test, with, which runs at 4K Ultra, 3840 by 2160. It's a DirectX 11 test, and I have sorted all these benchmarks. This is a test where the Radeon 7 performs really, really well, but bear in mind that will not continue to be the case through the rest of the test. The 5700 XT is just beating out the RTX 2070 Super here, and the RX 5700 is significantly better than Vega 56 from last generation, and it's coming in just shy of the RTX 2060 Super. Here you can also see why Nvidia decided that they needed to update the RTX 2060 to compete with these new Navi cards. 
Moving on to 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme, the DirectX 12 Ultra 4K test. Here the Radeon 7 has dropped down to a more reasonable score. We can see the 5700 XT coming in just shy of the RTX 2060 Super once again, and the 5700, which is beating out the Vega 64 and the RTX 2060. Next is 3D Mark VR Mark Blue Room, which is a virtual reality test for those of you who are into VR, just to give you an idea of performance here. The RTX cards actually perform very well here, taking the top four spots, followed up by the Radeon 7 and then the 5700 XT coming in just behind them. Not necessarily the best showing here for the Radeon cards as they are taking up five of the bottom six spots. Next we have Ashes of the Singularity, Ashes of the Benchmark as it is often known, running at 4K, 3840 by 2160, and I'm running all these tests at 4K, then 1440, and then 1080. Here at 4K though, we can see the RTX 2080 coming out on top, 2070 Super following it up, and then the 5700 XT not quite matching the RTX 2070, but it does beat out the Radeon 7 in this test. Meanwhile, the RX 5700 is beating the Vega 64, but not quite matching the RTX 2060 Super. Moving over to 1440, and this is the resolution that AMD is aiming the 5700 and 5700 XT at. And the 5700 XT is performing better here, just barely edging out the RTX 2070 and coming in in spot number three. RTX 2070 Super is beating it, but bear in mind that card costs a hundred more dollars. Meanwhile, the RX 5700 is coming in just shy of the 2060 Super, and again, beating the Vega 64. Finally, here at 1080, we have a similar breakdown with the 5700 XT coming in third, just behind the 2070 Super, the RX 57 just behind the 2060 Super, and again, just barely beating out the Vega 64. Next, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running at 4K, 3840 by 2160, and the 5700 XT is not quite able to beat the 2070 Super in this one, but it does beat the 2070 once again, so there's yet further evidence of why NVIDIA decided to follow up the RTX 2070 with the 2070 Super. Meanwhile, the 5700 performing very well here, beating not just the Vega 64, but also the 2060 Super. That trend continues at 2560 by 1440. 5700 got 88.2 frames per second compared to the 2060 Super's 86.7. Meanwhile, the 5700 XT once again beats the 2070, once again comes in just shy of the 2070 Super, but only by a few frames per second. Finally here, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 19 20 by 1080. The top four cards are all pretty neck and neck here, although we are seeing better 1% low numbers for the Radeon cards versus the RTX cards. The XD handily beats the 2070, and the 5700 is once again coming in ahead of the 2060 Super. Here is Grand Theft Auto 5 at 4K 3840 by 2160. Still a very popular game, although it is a little bit on the older side. It's DirectX 11, and AMD cards typically don't do the best in GTA 5. The 5700 XT here is coming in just below the 2060 Super, followed up by the 57. Both of them are still beating out the RTX 2060, but you do get better performance from both the RTX 2070 and the RTX 2070 Super at this resolution. At 1440, supposedly the sweet spot for the 5700 cards, we're not quite beating the 2060 Super yet again, although it is coming in ahead of the RTX 2060. And you can see uh, some pretty nice gains from last generation if you compare the Vega 56 and Vega 64 numbers. Finally, we have GTA 5 at 1920 by 1080. The 5700 XT jumps up in the charts here to fourth place, beating out the 2070. The RX 5700 is still coming in shy of the 2060 Super, but beating the 2060. Next up we have Battlefield 5 at 4K, 3840 by 2160. And here the 5700 XT and the 5700 and the Radeon 7 for that matter are actually showing poorer 1% low performance compared to the RTX variants. So that might be something to keep in mind. 5700 XT does beat out the 2070 Super here, and the 5700 is beating not just the 2060 Super, but also the RTX 2070, unless you look at 1% lows. Moving over to 2560 by 4 1440. Again, the 1% lows are not looking that great for the Radeon's cards here, but the 5700 XT is actually beating the 2080 when it comes to maximum performance. So here is probably a good example of the sweet spot 1440 resolution and the 5700 cards doing well. The standard 5700 is also beating the RTX 2070 and the Vega 64 here. Finally, here's Battlefield 5 at 1080. And then once again, we have the 5700 stepping up and beating not just the RTX 2070, but also the RTX 2070 Super. Not bad for a $350 card compared to a $500 card. Here's Overwatch at 4K 3840 by 2160. This is a game that I actually kind of know how to play, although that's, that's somewhat besides the point when it comes to benchmark numbers. Here, the 5700 XT is beating the Radeon 7 on the RTX 2070, although coming in shy of the 2070 Super. Radeon 5700 here is once again and outperforming the RTX 2060 Super. If we move over to 1440, we have the RTX 2080 on top, followed by the RTX 2070 Super, 
and then the RX 5700 XT. Meanwhile, the RX 5700 is down there in sixth place, just above the RTX 2060 Super once again. And here's Overwatch at 1080. The 5700 XT is coming in third here, beating the 2070, but not the 2070 Super. And the RX 5700 is just shy of the 2060 Super in this one and handily beats the RTX 2060. My last test is Metro Exodus DirectX 12 running 4K 3840 by 2160 here. The RTX 2080 is definitely the fastest in this lineup, followed by the Radeon 7 and the Vega 64. Vega 64 actually performing quite well here, followed by the 2070 Super and then the 5700 XT. Meanwhile, the 5700 is once again slotted in between the RTX 2070 and the 2060 Super. Moving over to 1440 and the 5700 XT here is still doing quite well, although it's not quite beating the 2070 Super, unless you look at the 1% low numbers. And then the RX 5700, once again, beating the 2060 Super, not quite beating the RTX 2070. And our final test here, Metro Exodus at 1080 and the 2080 is on top. 5700 XT is in fourth place, just above the 2070. 5700 is in sixth place, just above the 2060 Super. Now I wanted to show you guys some overall metrics. So here's a performance comparison of pretty much all the cards I tested compared to the RTX 2060. So if you're looking at the RTX 2060 as a zero point, this is the relative performance at 4K, 2560 by 1440, and 1920 by 1080 of all the different cards that I tested. I did sort these by performance. So at 4K, we can see the RX 5700 XT performs about 30.5% better than the RTX 2060. Meanwhile, the 5700 is about 17.1% faster. At 1440, the 5700 XT moves up a notch in the rankings, 28.35% better than an RTX 2060. Meanwhile, the RX 5700 is about 15.5% faster. Then finally at 1080, the RX 5700 XT is a little over 30% faster, and the RX 5700 is about 17.5% faster. Finally, here's a performance comparison with the prices in there too, and I've removed some of the cards here just to make it a simpler graph, so we're looking at the cards that are gonna be available. I removed the standard RTX 2070 and 2080, as well as the older AMD cards, so we can just look at the RTX 2060 at the bottom, which is 100% of performance for 350 bucks. If you compare that to the RX 5700, we're looking at between 15 and 17% better performance for the same price. So it seems like a pretty much a no-brainer there for which card you should go for. Compare the 5700 XT at $400 to the 2060 Super, and we're again looking at about a 10 to 15% performance bump comparatively for the same price. The 2070 Super is obviously the winner here, going between 30 and 40% faster compared to the RTX 2060, but it is also the most expensive card at $500. So I must say that I am very happy to be closing out this video because this week has been very intense with all of the benchmarking. I was very complimentary of AMD's work with Ryzen 3000 on the CPU side, and I am similarly chuffed with these new Navi cards, although it's not quite the blowout that AMD served Intel. The last minute price changes were effective though, and in particular, if you have 350 bucks to spend, the Radeon RX 5700 would be the way to go, unless you're really really, really into ray tracing, which would be okay, but in my opinion, it's not a reason to go with the 2060 over the 5700. In a similar fashion, the 5700 XT now looks very good at $400 compared to the 2060 Super and would get the recommendation at that $400 price. I'm hoping that Nvidia might be considering a price drop on the RTX 2070 Super to give it some better competition. All in all though, the new Navi cards provide some very respectable new options in the mid-range GPU market. Before they even launched, they proved that this new competition is giving us more performance for less money in the form of NVIDIA's Super Launch. And I'm very happy that the efficiency is there too. I will be looking forward to third party designs when they start coming to market. And I think that's gonna be a good spot to end this video. So hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comment section down below what other uses you'd like to see me put these Navi cards to. I wanna see them in a build or more testing, just, just let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video though, guys. I'm gonna go get some sleep. We'll see you in the next one.